Welcome to this QuickBooks 2022 tutorial for beginners on how to use your check register. My name is Matt Holtquist with the QuickBooks University, and I appreciate you joining me for this video. So something very basic, something simple I want to talk about in this video is using your check register. Uh, I notice a lot of times I will tell people, just go to your check register and do this, and you can void this check, or you can record you know, a debit card transaction there, whatever the case may be, and they get very confused at, well, how do I get to the check register? What is it? Okay, so in QuickBooks, uh, behind the scenes, you know, everything that you record in here is kind of like accounting behind the scenes. So they try to make it easy for you with this nice little flow chart of, okay, here's how a transaction should work in QuickBooks and, you know, follow these steps to make sure you record it right. And the check register is one of those things. So, you know, if you're old enough to remember actually having a checkbook, a physical checkbook, and you hand wrote checks, uh, there was always a check register in there, and that was just where you wrote down, hey, it's uh, the date, the check number, who it's to, and the amount. And you kept your running balance of, you know, your checking account or your savings account or whatever it was. The check register in QuickBooks is the exact same thing, except it's electronic. So I want to show you this today and some of the things that you can do within your check register, uh, because it does provide somewhat of a shortcut, uh, makes it things a little bit easier. So first things first, you're going to go to your home screen here. And you're going to see over under banking, you should have this banking box. And there's an option here, check register. So we're going to click on that. And you'll see here, it says use register and you choose the account. All right. So you should have all your bank accounts that you've set up in QuickBooks that show up here. And in this case, we're going to use the checking account. So you just choose your bank account and then click OK. So you see here, uh, just like an old style checkbook uh, check register, you've got all the different transactions and the amounts, and then you've got the running balance of your checking account over here. Now, something I like to do that you might like to do as well is if you go down to the bottom here, you're going to see this where it says one line. You can click this and it'll condense it to show you just one line. If you prefer to have a little bit more detail, where uh, if you click on here, you can see there's a memo section, etc. You can do this the two. I prefer the one line. Now, the other thing to take a look at down here is this sort by date type number reference. You can click this and you can change this to however you want. Now, this is a default uh, order, sort by, and it's just chronolog chronological order. So it's first by the date, then the type, and then the number and you'll see here all the different transactions. So let me just show you a couple of things. When you write a check or you pay a bill or anything that affects your checking account, it's gonna get recorded in this check register. You'll see here, and this is often very, very confusing for people. For example, this one, if we go into this transaction, you're gonna see that first you've got your date, then you've got your check number, then you've got to this, who this is to, Hopkins Construction Rentals, you've got the amount, and then the account. And a lot of people get confused when it says accounts payable. Now the reason this shows up as accounts payable is because in this situation, a bill was first entered for Hopkins Construction Rentals, and then the bill was paid. And so when you enter a bill, in QuickBooks, it becomes an accounts payable, which means this is money you owe somebody else. And then when you pay it, it reduces accounts payable and then reduces the checking account. And that's when it hits the checking account. So you're going to see here that it hits accounts payable. And again, this is very confusing because people say, well, hey, construction rentals, this was should have been under my job cost account, my expense account, but it's under accounts payable. Why is that? And that is the reason is because first it was entered as a bill. Now, if it was not entered as a bill, you'll see it will go directly to the expense account. So you can see here, VU contracting. This one was not entered as a bill and was not paid as a bill. And it was entered directly into uh, this expense account, job expenses, subcontractors. So that is why you're going to see those different accounts on there. Now you can double count or double click on any one of these transactions. So if you if you go here where your cursor shows, see I've got the arrow and it's on a line, you can double click and it's going to take you directly to this check for view contracting. And you can go in here and you can see what's going on. Now if I close that, let's say I go to accounts payable, Timberloft Lumber. 
That one, you're going to see it is a check, and you're going to see what bill that it paid. It paid this bill that was due 12-31-2024 for $1,610, and this is the transaction. All right. So now let me close this. Now, you know, typically people will say, okay, well, I had a debit card transaction. I got gas. How do I enter that in QuickBooks? What do I do? Very simple. The easiest way is to go to your check register. And you're going to go here and you're going to put in the date. Okay, so we'll say it's 12-17-2023. Since this was a debit card transaction, you can type in debit if that's easiest for you. Or you can type in uh, ACH, uh, electronic, e-check, whatever you want to type in to signify that this is a debit card transaction. So I typically put debit. Payee, I am going to say that we paid Exxon. Now that is a new vendor. So I'm going to do a quick add. I'm going to say it's a vendor and click OK. And I'm going to say that we spent 68.23. And then I'm tabbing over. So now it's in the account field. Let's see if there is an account. There is one there for fuel for automobile. So I'll say automobile fuel. And if I want to put in a memo, I can put in a memo. And I click tab and it saves it. Now, if I needed to split this transaction between two different accounts, I'm back up here highlighting this account. I can click splits and you'll see it brings up this drop down. So I can say fuel was 4823. And we will say office supplies. Let's say I got some office supplies at Exxon is the remaining $20. So that is a split transaction where I'm splitting the total between two different accounts. Now, if I say record, you have changed it. Yes. And now I've got a split and you'll see that it says split right here. Okay. Simple as that. The check register can be something very, very effective to use. Makes things much, much easier when you're recording simple transactions. Try it out. Check it out. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. When you become a member, I answer all your personal QuickBooks questions.